Hi there, my name is uh, Mike McCall. I, uh, basically what I do is, uh, in my spare time, I design and build uh, high-end custom and one-off uh, pieces of furniture. And uh, what I'm going to do here today is, uh, I was sitting in my shop uh, a few months ago, listened to a wonderful pair of old 30-plus-year-old Kenwood speakers, <clears throat> decided, well, it's time to finally get a better set of speakers. Uh, I'm not an audio audiophile by any stretch of imagination, but we all know good music when we hear it. And, uh, so I decided to see what what I could buy for around eight hundred to a thousand dollars, and I got to listen to speakers out there and doing reviews on speakers in that price range. Was really not happy with what was out there production-wise, so uh, pretty much a do-it-yourselfer anyway. So I went that route. I spent a few months doing uh, research, reading graphs and charts and numbers that I didn't understand anyway. <clears throat> Finally found a design where everything's already figured out for you. It's a free download. There's uh, all kinds of people that have built this uh, set of speakers. They're called the Aerials. Uh, they're by a guy named Lynn Olson. His latest design, uh, I think he went through several designs in 10 years. The latest one's called the Mark VI. It's his last definitive design on this speaker. Uh, everyone has a little bit of change to it. And he says, this is the one if you're going to build, uh, if you're going to build a set of the Aerials, this is the one you should build. So that's the one I'm going with. Um, uh, Cost-wise, uh, speakers are going to end up costing around a thousand dollars to build. Uh, for me, it's going to be around seven hundred dollars to maybe eight hundred, because I've already got all the wood here for the, uh, the the interior of the cabinet and the exterior of the cabinet as well. Uh, the drivers right now are running between seventy-five to eighty dollars for the uh, for the mid-rangers. You're going to need mid-range or mid-base uh, drivers. You can need four of those. Around $140, $150 for the uh, tweeters and two of those is what you're going to need uh, for this project. Uh, let's take a little uh, tour around the shop here. I'll show you what tools I'm going to be using. I've got here, you're going to be using this lot. It's, uh, it's just basically a table saw. It's, a, it's an older Grizzly model. Uh, In-feed and out-feed tables for that. Uh, over here I've got a, a cross-cut sled. Uh, it actually fits in the uh, grooves on the table saw, allows me to make perfect 90 degree cuts. On this particular saw, uh, several years ago I installed an INCRA fifth system, uh, fence system for the saw. Absolutely wonderful, incredibly, incredibly accurate. Uh, let's see here. Over here we have the uh, mortar, sir. Don't think I'll be using that on this project. Uh, 12 inch sliding rigid compound saw, uh, radial arm saw set into the bench. And at the router table, I've got a Bosch router in there right now, uh, getting ready to install a, a Milwaukee, a three and a quarter horsepower. Had a uh, oscillating uh, belt spindle sander, a couple drill presses there. Let's see. There's my HVLP gun and turbine system I use for the finishing. Got a couple planers here. This is actually a planer molder sander. It's a 25 inch uh, Woodmaster, and I've got a 13 and a half inch uh, a rigid planer there. Got uh, plenty of clamps there. Dust collection is always important. Uh, I've installed uh, two homemade filters there that sit in the ceilings. As you can tell by looking around, I've got uh, a fair amount of dust collection. Runs into an 8x8 eight eight room there in the corner where my dust collector is and then shoots it into a trailer outside the uh, building there. Take a look at the uh, design here. I didn't recommend this for the beginner woodworker. In fact, I've been in uh, custom woodworking for about eight or nine years now. Even I find this a little intimidating. This which have is called a TL design. It's a transmission line. You don't see them very often because they're number one, they're a pain in the butt to build. And they got a bad rap back in the 70s and 80s because the drivers aren't near as high efficiency as they are now. What we have here, they're called transmission lines. Here you have mid-range driver here and here. Transmission lines isolate and allow the sound to go down to a system of baffles. This in the system of baffles is a, a little longer. We get down here, they come out through these, uh, I don't know if you can see them or not, these uh, little holes here actually in the sides of the speakers uh, for ports. I haven't decided if I'm going to use that design yet or not. I'm not really crazy about it. I think there's some other people have used uh, different configurations for the ports down here. The base, <clears throat> made out of wood. I may use uh, a solid cherry for that. I haven't decided yet. I may even uh, use uh, 
a piece of granite for the base of the speaker. Some of the earlier designs, the ports were not in the sides here. The speaker was actually raised up off the base and could be lowered up and down. And there was a hole here in the bottom where it vented out. Notice here, very specific about the radiuses. <clears throat> On the inside radius of each speaker, it's an inch and a half. The outside radius is one inch. These are very important. Uh, those are pretty big radiuses. They're hard to do by hand, although people have done them. Uh, wood line uh, sells router bits online. Uh, the total for each one of those bits, the one inch and the, and the one and a half inch, or the one and a quarter inch, I'm sorry, uh, is going to run you about 70 or 80 dollars, which is not too bad. Basically, what we have here the front is actually two pieces laminated together. One thing you cannot change on this design is the interior dimensions. 10.75 inches or 10 and 3 quarters inches interior dimensions from side to side six and a half inches we have, we have some dead spaces here 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 there there and there uh, a lot of people fill these up with sand you want the speaker to be as dead and resonant free as possible that helps a lot I don't know what the weight on the speaker is going to be. I'm going to guess in the range of 125 to 150 pounds. All depending on what kind of base I decide to put on it. Right here is where your binding posts go for speaker connections. Uh, I've seen some people put this up a little bit higher and actually install the crossover network up in this dead space here. Crossover network is uh, looking at the design of it. It's, it's fairly simple and straightforward. A lot of people actually put the active crossover network mounted on the back. Uh, aesthetic wise, doesn't look that great. I haven't decided where I'm going to put the crossover network yet. So basically what I've done is I've taken that design and laid it out full scale on my assembly table. Using straight edge here as a reference. Just transferred the entire design full scale onto the table. Basically what I'm going to do, this will allow me to cut each individual piece and lay it exactly where it goes. Each piece exactly. Once it's all put together, what I'm going to do is take that entire baffle system and the uh, transmission line system, I'm going to stabilize it, put a nail on the board across the top of it, I'm going to take the entire assembly, put it over there on a piece of plywood. What I'm going to do is basically trace, use a scoring knife and trace around that entire baffle system. Take the baffle system off and route out the slots into the piece of plywood. Basically what that's going to do is it's going to give me a template to route out the sides of the speakers to accept this enti the entire guts of the speaker there. These actually are a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch. I'm going to use three eighths of an inch proud of the interior of the speaker. They actually sit into dados or grooves in the sides of the speakers. That's basically where I am right now. I just wanted to uh, introduce you to the design. Uh, maybe give you some pointers on getting going on this thing. <coughs> like I said there's a plenty, of plenty of information about this design on the internet. So that Lynn Olson has been doing this for a long time, 1975. So I've never heard of the speakers yet. Uh, great reviews on them. A lot of people have built these things. Uh, another thing you may want to consider besides the cost is that the, uh, the, amplifier, the amplifier you're using right now will probably not drive these things. Uh, you may have to switch amplifiers. Uh, your solid state and tr uh, transistor uh, amplifiers are really not designed to drive the speaker. It does have uh, high uh, power requirements. These are very high efficiency drivers. There's people out there driving this uh, set of speakers with 8 to 15 watts per channel. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it's it's the quality of the receiver that actually matters. A lot of receivers nowadays, just you know, that you buy at the store, electronics store, whatever, will not do a good job. They'll work, but they won't sound that great with these speakers. That's another uh, maybe a cost consideration you might have to take into account. That's where we're at right now. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna, this is not a self-promotional video. Uh, I'm not looking to make any money here. But what I did decide to do, though, the only reason I'm making the template for the dados, <clears throat> is this will allow you 
to reproduce these over and over again if you ever want to make a set for somebody else or several people, you know. And, I mean, that's entirely up to you. That's the reason I'm doing this. It's going to take me probably an extra couple of days to do that, but I'll have the template uh, forever. You know, so uh, that's all for right now. I'll uh, be posting something here in a, in a couple, three months. Uh, after I get the Apple system built and everything, I'm going to take a few things for granted that uh, you, uh, somebody that's going to take on this project already knows. Uh, a fair amount about woodworking, so I'm probably going to skip a few steps. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to have a video on here of me uh, ripping a piece of plywood. You know, it's just a wasted time. So, and uh, just keep an eye out on YouTube, and uh, we'll see you later.